BC, I'm back. Um, this is a very last minute impromptu video. I kind of wanted to do a bonus episode to my uh, West Coast Digs series. Um, Vinyl Richie over at Vinyl Richie gave me the idea. Um, I did mention that I picked up, I think I said 10 upgrades, record upgrades on my trip that I wasn't gonna show. And he said, oh, you should show them, do a bonus episode. So I'm gonna show the records that I bought as upgrade copies while I was in the US. Now I thought I had 10, but I actually only have seven and then three of them are upgrades that I've bought since I've been back home, technically. So um, I'm gonna show them and I'm gonna be quite brief and quick. Um, but yeah, here we go. Here's the things that I bought as upgrade copies and I've uh, actually recently sold off most of the ones at a record fair. So um, I finally found a really, really clean copy of this wonderful, wonderful album, Winter in America. Um, I don't need to say anything. Everything has been said about this record. It is absolutely beautiful and moving and powerful. Um, what I should say is, if you can hear this in the background, I'll probably get a copyright strike, but um, I don't care, so sorry about the ads. Um, this, this wonderful record has finally been reissued. This is my favorite Sun Cool Moon record. This is my favorite thing that Mark Kozlik has ever put out. This is uh, Admiral Fell Promises. Um, this came out in 2010, originally. Um, I was really lucky enough to see him live around this time just as Mark Kozlik. So he played in um, two shows in Melbourne uh, and I went to both nights. I went by myself. Um, this was, yeah, a long, long time ago. Um, and at that time he was still playing things with uh, his classical guitar um, and a very classical style. He was still singing really beautifully. Um, and I got, I got to see him play a bunch of um, Red House Painter songs. Um, a bunch of stuff from here. Um, it was really beautiful. Um, I particularly remember him doing two, a really powerful version of Mistress um, from, I forgot the album, but you'll probably know the song if you're a Red House Panthers fan. And um, Down Through was really beautiful. Um, he did Katie's song as well. So um, anyway, that was complete sidetrack. Um, th this is absolutely beautiful. Um, basically all on um, nylon string guitar, check out Half Moon Bay, Third and Seneca, Out the Sun. Yeah, really happy. It's on this um, crazy 2LP ghost splatter thingy. Anyway, that's a complete side track. So that's added a few minutes to the video unnecessarily, but that's what's playing in the background. Um, this is my uh, third copy of this record. I picked up a really, really immaculately clean, lovely US pressing of this. I've gone through um, a New Zealand pressing and an Australian pressing. Both have been kind of average sounding and really noisy. So this is super clean. It's on this really, really thick card, which I love. Um, absolute amazingly country rock. Oh, it covers a whole bunch of stuff, but this is kind of an all-star band of that sort of scene. Um, yeah, monster record. I, lo I love this record. Super common, super cheap. Now, I was in San Francisco, and some of you might know my history of the Grateful Dead. I kind of, I'm not into them as much as some people, but I really enjoy them, and I've bought and sold copies over the years. Um, and I found three Grateful Dead records really cheap that I, I had copies of, but they were a bit noisy and I wasn't happy with them. And I just kind of impulse bought them again. <laughs> um, so this is, uh, an, a, a nice, a really nice US copy of Live Dead. Uh, really wonderful. Um, Skull and Roses. Now, my favorite Grateful Dead track, probably that I've heard, is, is Wharf Rat. So I was really happy to get a nice clean copy of that and this, it sounds amazing. Um, I, I had to buy Grateful Dead records in San Francisco. Um, it was gonna happen. And this record I've bought and sold twice before because I love the artwork, I love the cover. It's definitely not the greatest album. It's not even the great, it's actually a pretty terrible sounding record, but I just bought it because I was there. Um, yeah, so that's three records. Um, I did pick up a very uncool record, but it's a record that I love. 
I picked up a really nice Japanese pressing of Dex's Midnight Runners, Searching for the Young Soul Rebels. Um, I had like a really tatty New Zealand pressing that I got for super cheap, but this is a really nice clean Japanese pressing that sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, so I was very happy with that. What else have we got here? Oh, this is a biggie. Um, yeah, look at this. Very happy to get a copy of this on ESP. Um, I have, um, I haven't sold it yet, but I probably will. Teddy uh, Eat Sleep Vinyl sent me a 1981 reissue on the Italian label um, BASF um, with a different cover. Um, I'll, I'll put the cover up here if I remember. Um, but I've always loved this cover version and me being a fickle graphic designer, I had to get, I had to get this version here when I saw it. Um, so I was really, really happy to grab this. I think it's a pretty early-ish ESP version of it. It's definitely within the first few years after the original release. Um, so yeah, very, very happy to grab that one. Um, and these two are things that I've bought since I've been back. Now, um, this is Jamilia, Songs from a Somali City. Now, in Ami Amoeba, I found the reissue of this one, and it was like marked down like 70%. So I think I paid like seven or eight US dollars for it. Um, and the reissue has a really terrible rework of the artwork here. It's cropped weirdly. Someone's redone it really badly in Photoshop. Um, and I grabbed it. It, this has been on my list for a long time. I think Chris Cole told me about this many years ago, you know, like sort of seven or eight years ago. Um, and I got the reissue home and I kind of, I loved the record so much, but I wasn't happy with it. And as luck would have it, I jumped on Discogs and one had just come up for, for quite a lot cheaper than what I've seen it for. And the shipping was really reasonable. And it came from... Um, Zach and Vass over at, is it Music Research Library? Um, I think they're in Boston, Massachusetts. I follow them on Instagram uh, under Young Vinyl. Um, so that was really cool. That's a store that I would love, love to visit. Uh, it looks super amazing. Um, so they sent me that. Uh, I was really happy with it. Um, yeah, so there we go. This is a, a really, really wonderful. Just check it out. I'm not gonna describe it to you guys Yeah. This series is really, really hard to find. Um, there's a bunch of them. Um, I think um, there's a few. Francis Bebe has a few things on here. Um, yeah, to check out this series, it's called the uh, Contemporary African Music Series. And then the last one is, you may recall, I bought a while ago as a blind buy the, um, God, what the hell is that label called? Cobblestone. Is it the Cobblestone um, bootleg of this with a different cover called Bonus Aries Blues? This is a official reissue on Alter Cat Records um, of this album here, Blues Para on Cosmonaut. An amazing um, jazz funky fusion record. Um, this label I've been so interested in at the moment. Um, you probably can't see it, that's not focusing, but it's called Alter Cat. Um, they're doing some amazing records, uh, amazing Argentinian jazz and uh, other sort of Latin stuff at the moment. Um, a lot of George uh, Ruiz Lopez, George Lopez Ruiz records. Um, there's some stuff that's very, very intriguing. And um, please check out that label. I'm gonna probably grab some of their stuff soon, but that's what I've been into lately. Um, you probably also see, speaking of monsters, if you know that record there, I'm really happy to get a, a reissue of that. Um, that that was a big spend this month. Um, but there you go. That's that's kind of that. I hope that was kind of quick and easy. Um, upgrade copies. Thank you. Goodbye.